Hey, what is up? Wanted to make a quick video about the new update to the MetaHuman Face Helper here. And today we have implemented selections. So I showed this before. And so our general workflow is going to be in sequence or regular. And we're going to be working on the face control board control rig here. I have already set a neutral key. Let's set a mobile pu here. We're going to go to an A. We're going to go to a T. And then we're going to close like this. So this is something like saying mat, right? So we've said mat, and that's our rough block out. We want to do this as fast as possible, match the lip sync or clean up AR kit either way. That's much of the value. Now we want to look at getting into more finessed control. So if you're used to using the control rig board over here, you definitely can. So say you wanted to clean up you wanted to inspect what's happening with the jaw. That's one of the most important things you need to get cleaned up with a mocap or a lip sync. And so what you need to do is eventually click on this jaw controller, which is here. And this is the way that um, some people might be animating. However, you'll see that when you select the jaw, it selects the MH facial board and not the actual jaw track. So that makes this very difficult to work with. And likewise, as we move to sequencer curves, if I select the jaw again, it picks the wrong track. So that makes this selection process kind of broken and not very helpful. Uh, so I'm going to close this up again and deselect this stuff. And what I want to show today is how I have kind of solved a uh, selection here. What happened with that? Oh, I moved the jaw. So what I'm going to do is click on jaw. And if you open this up, you'll see that this is correctly selected now. I can click it again, and it will select the actual correct control, which is like what this will probably eventually do, but just does not do currently. Uh, and this, however, is a really cumbersome view. I would not want to do this, because what you'd have to do is come to this and then change the value, and then come to here and change the value. And you see the value here. That's a really cumbersome way of animating. It's not very good. So I recommend keeping this thing closed forever, <laughs> for now and really just doing the big picture stuff with our keyframe setters over there. And when it comes to finessing them, you want to go to Sequence Curves, which is this button here, like this. OK? So um, what we're going to do is uh, deselect everything. I've kind of been selecting funny. I'm going to select now just the jaw. And you'll see that it cor correctly selected Control-C jaw, the Y axis. This is something I'm limiting for you, is it's just the Y axis at the moment. And now you can see a graphical represent representation of what the jaw is doing. And this is how you're going to want to animate. This is where if things are getting like really jagged and there's big jumps, or if you're cleaning up mocap data, there's going to be big spikes or whatnot. The jaw wants to be, you know, relatively, relatively smooth, right? For most uh, smooth looking normal dialogue. And so with this, again, I can go from nothing and I basically ignore this completely over here. And I just say, I want to look at the jaw. And I'm like, you know what? Here, let's have the jaw open a little bit more. You'll see the curve editing, or changing, I'm sorry. And then the mouth will eventually catch up as well uh, in the preview like this. So this allows you a really easy way of getting, selecting the control that you're kind of concerned about. So we go to the next key here. Uh, you have to click on the graph and then go like this, which is the period and comma key. Or you can just you know move the playhead like that. And we're looking at uh, an, an O face here. And you'll see the only control we're using is jaw open. So maybe we'll go to something a little bit more complicated. You'll see that on this T here, TDS, that we have turned on upper lip raise and lower lip depress and dimple. So if we want to see these, we will then click these two here like this. And currently, they're the same value. I can turn off jaw if we want. They're actually the same value, and we're actually controlling four curves. But don't even worry about it. They're all selected right here. So if I want to do the lower separately, you'll see that the lower kind of starts moving on its own. And you can really quickly diagnose this, because like certain models, you might want to show more or less upper bottom teeth. Uh, and I basically will do that here. So if I wanted to show a little bit more here and less there, uh, I'm able to do that now looking at the curves. And you can see how the, uh, the lips the lip openers will basically like kind of go from off to rolling on. And so this is where you're able to like actually animate and control them. It's just that previously, if you're using the board, it was very difficult and cumbersome to actually select the right control. So now we have very finite control over which one we want. If we want to look at, say, 
Uh, this is the jaw, I believe. You can hover over it. That's not color coded like Maya yet. It would be nice to have this be like purple and that be purple and have that match that might happen in the future. But for now, the next best thing is just toggling them off and on. So this is the jaw versus the upper lip raise. And then we can look at all three at once. So this is the jaw versus the upper and lower lip raise. And you need to look at these things over time if you want to get like really nice looking animation. And then finally for this one, again, for this example, we have our dimple and you could maybe pull dimple all the way up. This is going to widen the mouth. This is one of the ways to widen the mouth here. And you'll see that it's a pretty fluid process to observe what's happening. You could also come in and grab these here. I can turn these off and look at just dimple versus the mouth and start to animate them this way or using the sliders. And again, we're just managing what's getting selected and it's a very fast and fluid process to add and remove the selections.